Welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about painting mirrors. So here I have the mirror from the uh, Slanesh Endless Spell, it's the one that goes with this big hand, and we're going to go ahead and paint it. So this is the last thing I have to do is paint the actual mirror surface itself. Um, mirrors appear in a couple different things like say behind the back of the Medusa in uh, Daughters of Cain and so on and so forth. And uh, you'll notice this one, like when you buy the kit, it's actually got a texture to it. It's sort of got a, a waviness to it. Um, I didn't like that, so I just actually put it like this and did a small resin pour inside this central area to flatten it all out. And then, yeah, and there we go. Um, but this would work even if you're, <clears throat> even if you did have the normal waves that are that come in this kit. I just don't happen to like it. And most of the mirrors you would paint would be flat and not have that texture. Hence, why we did it. At any rate, let's get into what we're doing today. So, mirrors in general, you want to have the light reflected a little bit like a gem. That is to say, which I've got a couple gems on here, where it's dark up top where the light is entering and gets lighter down here at the bottom. Um, this mirror is going to be much the same. We want the light to kind of spill across the surface and gather. Now, you have a, you have a choice when it comes to a mirror because we're just sort of fake making a mirror here. That is to say, uh, if you wanted to, you could try to paint sort of a lighter blue than what we're going to do here and the reflection of whatever's around it in it. So you could almost do this in a sort of sky earth meta method. We're not going to do that. Um, there, That's a different video. This is if you want to assume the mirror is just sort of reflecting distant foggy images like the sky or something like that. So. This is more what you end up seeing used on like box art for the various um, for the various Games Workshop things. They tend to do it more in this style. So, what do we have? Well, right here we've got some Payne's Gray, uh, which is our blue-black ink from Dollar Rowney. Right here next to that we have some Holdra Blue, which is just a nice dark blue. Uh, this would be something like Cantor Blue or something like that. I suppose is probably pretty close. I think that's pretty dark. And then right here, we have our old friend, the golden heavy body artist, acrylic titanium white. And to do this mirror, the initial part of it, we're gonna do a little loaded brush blending. Wait, come back, don't leave. I'm sorry, don't worry. It's fine, trust me. If you wanna do, like if, you, if you've never tried loaded brush before and you're a little scared, a surface like this is a great way to practice because it's big, and it's messy and it doesn't matter when you get it wrong because we're going to do it lots of times. So, stick with me. I promise it'll be worth it. Okay, so what do we do? First, we start with a nice big brush. In this case, this is a size 6 from Saks True Flow. Uh, and we're going to want... So I'll bring my paper towel in so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to want to take a little bit of this blue-black ink. Okay, we're going to bring it up here. And we're going to grab a little bit of that blue paint and we're going to mix it in. So we want a little ink, a little paint. I want to get the little dog hair out of my brush. Part of the constant challenge of my life is the ever-present dog hair. Then we're going to go to this and we're going to wick off all of that excess liquid. Okay? All right. Then we're just going to grab a nice sized dollop of titanium white. Now, one of the reasons I like doing it, practicing loaded brush on a big surface like this, is because you can use more white, you don't have to get a tiny little tip, and when you screw up, it's fine. So with the belly of the brush all full of the darker color and the tip like this, we're gonna start at the low side where we want it to be, and we're just gonna start pulling it back. And you notice I'm using the brush sideways, And we're going to come down here, flip the brush over. Okay. So we get something that looks like that. Nice and ugly, right? And that's fine. Let's refresh our ink and paint mixture. It's supposed to be ugly at this point. We grab another dollop of white. Okay. We set that on there, we go to work again. 
I can, you notice I'm, the brush is laying at a very low angle. Like you can see the angle that my brush is compared to the, the surface. And once I'm down to just that ink, we'll go back to just the ink. We'll go ahead and keep that same angle up here. I'm not worrying about the metal around the edge, like I'll come back and clean that up in a moment. Okay. So now we have a surface that looks like that. Nice and streaky and ugly, brush strokey. And that's fine. No big deal. We don't worry. Refill our brush again. Grab a nice dollop of white. Okay. And one more time. Let's get a little more. And we just keep bringing that up. Then what we're gonna do is now that we've got all that white down there, you can see it's kind of built up. We're gonna wipe our brush. We're gonna go and we're gonna grab that white. And while everything's still nice and wet, we're just gonna pull it up. Start smoothing it in. Just start smoothing it in. Okay. And just like that, we have a pretty basic sketch of a mirror. Now, at this point, it's still quite brush strokey. You can see it's still quite wet and shiny, right? So, now what we do is we're gonna let this dry completely. Like I was able to work with it for a minute because the paint was still wet, the ink stays wet nice and long, everything on here remained wet. But now I don't wanna go over it or I'm gonna start pulling it up. But you can see how I use the loaded brush to just start getting it, then I voided off all the paint just by wiping it on the paper towel, and then I just, again, with the brush at a very low angle, smoothed it in, worked it together, and just smoothed it out, okay? So I'm gonna pause for a moment to let this dry, and when I come back, I'll show you what our next steps are and how we get this from streaky to smooth. Back in a moment. All right, we're back. So you can see everything nice and dry, no more reflecty, shiny, wet paint. Um, but you can see it is very streaky, and that's okay. Because at this stage, we're not trying to get it perfect. So now is when we're gonna introduce some flow aid. This is some flow improver from War Colors. I happen to really like their mix. You can order it in big bottles. It's very nice. You can use whatever you want. You can use like the Liquitex stuff from the art store and just, you know, buy it and thin it out. That's perfectly fine. Okay. So what we're gonna do is basically the same thing again, but this time we're gonna make sure our brush has lots of flow aid in it. We're gonna mix it in there. So now we have a, uh, a mix with a whole heck of a lot of flow aid in it. We're gonna go ahead and wick all that out. Then we're gonna grab that white paint. And once again, we're gonna do the same thing. But this time, because the paint, the blue is more thin, what's gonna happen is the white will be a lot thinner and won't be as strong. So, we grab some more white, we just keep mixing that in. And what we're gonna do is place a bunch of that heavy body acrylic down here. And you can see how the more I keep dipping into it and adding it in, the lighter we get this area down here. Now the key is heavy body acrylics don't really flow very well naturally, as you might expect, because you know, they're heavy body acrylics. But the addition of the flow aid into the ink helps that out. Because what we want to get is that nice, smooth transition. So then what we do is once again, we wipe our brush, make sure that it's nice and, nice and clean. And then just like last time, while everything's still nice and wet, we come in, 
we just feather that all together. Just taking these nice big sweeping strokes right across the surface. Okay. Okay, so now you can see we've got that much lighter reflection up there. The other thing we're gonna do while we're waiting is we're gonna go straight into some of our blue-black ink, just straight up some of that ink. We're gonna go ahead and wick off that excess like we do. Okay, and then we're gonna come up here to the top and in the opposite direction, we're just gonna replace some of that. The difference is we're gonna to come to about there Wipe the brush. And then just feather that right down into the other side. Okay. Okay. So now I've got that nice smoky horizon there, kind of just fading in. So we're gonna let this dry and then I'll talk about how we sort of finish it out, do some next steps and some options. Back in just a moment. All right, so everything's dry and now we're back over in the airbrush booth. And the reason we're over here is because we're gonna do the next step with an airbrush. Now, you don't have to. If you wanted to, or if you don't have an airbrush or you prefer glazing, you can just do what I'm about to do with glazes, with normal paint. I want to do it with an airbrush just because it's quicker and it provides a nice silky smooth blend to sort of finish it out. But again, you can do whichever step you want. You would just do these next two steps I'm about to do through glazes instead of through an airbrush. But what I've done is I've taken some basically white ink. Okay, so this is, uh, this is just the this is Vallejo white ink as opposed to Dalarani, which you can use any of them. And I've thinned it out at an eight to one ratio. So eight drops of thinner to one drop of ink. Okay. So what you get is something that's quite thin. Let's see how much that's covering. Right. Now, the reason I didn't try to do this all through an airbrush, because you might ask, well, why not just do the whole thing through an airbrush? Because I do want a little bit of that texture of the brush to remain because actually those, those, a little bit of that streaking is actually a really nice effect for the mirror. But we don't want it that strong. We would use glazes to back it out if we were going that direction, but here we're gonna use the airbrush. For those asking in advance what's around my mirror, it's the AK Camouflage Elastic Putty for airbrush. It's actually basically just black silly putty, but it's really nice and it's not sticky at all and it's pretty great. So then we just come in here with the airbrush and focusing toward this area. You can see how much that actually covers. We just very carefully start building up those layers. We're glazing with the airbrush in the same way we would with a paintbrush. It's a little bit easier to glaze white with an airbrush because you can lay down this thin layer. It stays relatively transparent because of how it breaks it all up. And we can build it up nice and slowly. As you can see, I'm still relying on part of what's already there to show through. You'll also notice that I'm being very light touch, not spraying a lot. My finger's barely moving on the airbrush. We're barely putting any paint through. Just nice light touch. I'm gonna go up a little higher than I actually want to be white for our next step, okay? So now that I've got that like that, we're gonna go ahead and clean the airbrush again like always. All we do to clean the airbrush is we don't put any extra paint through. We never put the extra paint in here out the front of this. That's just encouraging tip dry. Instead, we go straight, fill it up with water, and I have a cup right over here in my airbrush booth. 
we backfill, we dump the airbrush. So now it's like that. More water. Backfill, dump the airbrush. Third water. Backfill, dump the airbrush. Then we blow the rest out. And bada boom, crystal clear, crystal clean airbrush. Ready to go for the next time. Simple, fast, easy. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same ratio with Payne's Gray. It's about an eight to one ratio, thinner to a drop of the ink. So this is just our Payne's Gray from the previous step. Nice flow. We do a test on the back of our hand. We never test on the figure. And now we do the same thing, but in reverse. We glaze the darker color up here. And we're gonna bring it down slightly over that white we just did. Use just a little air. No paint at all right there, just drying it off. We go back in for round two. Again, just air right there to dry it off. Kind of look at it at different angles, make sure we like how that's looking. Good. All right, so now we make a decision. Do we like how that is, or do we want to maybe add a little more blue, a little more sky color to it? You can kind of go either direction, all right? In this case, I feel like what we need here is a little more blueness to it, a little more of a sort of bright sky color, right? So, to that end, what we're gonna do is we are going to grab another ink. Because the reason I'm using inks here, by the way, is because inks are just sort of naturally transparent and so make it a lot easier. In this case, we're gonna just grab a little Dollar Rowney turquoise. It's a very nice color, but again, you could use anything that's roughly this sort of light blue color. You could use any paint, anything like that. Nothing magical about the exact colors I have. The Payne's Gray is, is admittedly a good thing to have. Like, I would honestly recommend everybody pick up some Payne's Gray and some white ink. I, I use them on almost every project. So now we're going about 10 to one with that ink, okay? Which gives us a nice transparent blue. Okay, then what we're gonna do is right here in the middle, right on the border of our color, That enriches, you can see how now we have that nice rich blue filter that just adds a little bit to it. It's not a strong effect and that's not what we want. We want it to still feel like this foggy cloud, right, that's being reflected in there. There we go. You can see how a little bit of that streaking from the brush still shows through. But now it just looks like sort of the sweep of like the wind or the clouds or something moving in there. We don't want it to be completely perfect and smooth because if it was, I think the effect is actually lessened. So by having a little bit of that streak still remaining, it actually enhances our effect. Okay, so 
that's it for the airbrush. Done our glazes. There we go. And uh, now we're gonna go back over to the desk to do a little quick finishing because we gotta add just one more little touch. So back in just a moment. All right, now we're back at the painting desk and you can see mirror looks nice and shiny, reflective. Looks like we've got a nice deep sort of horizon in there like a fog. And you can see a little bit of that texture from the brush is still there. And that's what we want. Like we want a little bit of that still showing there. Again, you could do all that with brush glazes, but Lord knows it would take a lot longer. Now, if you wanna jump off at this point, perfectly fine. But if you wanna add one more little interesting touch to your mirror, then stick around. So I've got these gems, and these gems have told me that the light point is coming from basically this direction. So one of the things we can do is we can add a little bit of a light reflection in our mirror. So in addition to our white heavy body acrylic, I now have some white ink, the same white ink we just used a moment ago. I've mixed that with a little bit of flow improver, and here what I've got is a nice strong white mix that'll be really strong but let me draw really thin lines. The heavy body acrylic makes it so it's very sticky and attaches. The ink makes it so it's flowing and it comes together where I can paint a line like that. That's nice and sharp and thin. And what we can do is here in sort of the corner of the mirror at the same angle as our light reflection is, we can come in and we can put dried out while I was talking. Okay. There we go. Okay, we can come in and we can put a nice little, let's say, about that angle. and we can catch a little reflection in there, right? So we use kind of a long line and then a shorter line on a cross hatch from that and then little tinier lines and we create a little star pattern and there we go, we have a nice little reflection in our mirror. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm just gonna kind of quickly matte varnish that whole thing so it's nice and sealed in and locked up and we're good to go. That's how you paint a mirror, just that easy, uh, easy. I should state, of course, as I, just to repeat what I said at the beginning, this is just one way to get a sort of mirror sheen effect. This is kind of re reflecting, you know, almost like a nighttime sky or something like that, or light against darkness or, you know, sort of an infinite reflection. There's a hundred ways to paint mirrors, including just having them be sort of amorphous reflections of what's around them. You can do sort of the sky earth non-metallic metal with it. You can have reflections of the thing that's in front of them in them. All of that is perfectly valid. There's no one right way to do this as with, as with most of these things. And uh, don't be afraid to sort of explore with this kind of a surface. It's rare we get to play around with this sort of thing. So this can be an excellent opportunity for something like freehand. So, you know, here I wanted to go for this kind of just generic reflection since it's sitting on the front of this big giant hand and there's nothing in front of it. But like if I were doing the one behind the Medusa, maybe you want to reflect like the back of the Medusa or something. The point is, is that, you know, you can use opportunities like this to explore your own creativity and it's fine. It, the worst case, if you mess up, oh no, you repaint a flat surface real quick. If you do have an airbrush, it's pretty fast to reset it back to where it was. Even if you don't, just grab some rather opaque paint and go and have a good time. But don't ever be afraid to experiment. So, with that being said, that's how we paint mirrors. If you liked this, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you have a suggestion for future topics, go ahead and leave that down in the comments. If you have any questions, of course, same thing. Always happy to answer any questions you have. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.